This is the Mark III wind vane. This is the wind vane that I built and designed for Wave Rover. Now this is a rugged wind vane. It's very strong, it's across the Atlantic, it's been through a couple of gales, but it's also very simple. Virtually anybody can build one. And as a wind vane, it will work on virtually any sailboat. Now this is the second video in a series. If you haven't seen the first video, I'd recommend you see it now. Everything will make a lot more sense if you do that. You can, I'll put a link up right here that will allow you to uh, go directly there. Now in this video, I'll be showing you how you can build your own. I'll give you all the design specifications that I use building this, and I'll also run you through how it works in a very broad sense. There will be a third video that I'll be doing on the next passage where I'll be sailing from the Canary Islands all the way to Panama. And during that passage, I will uh, be making course corrections all the time. So I will videotape how to operate the Mark III steering gear. So let's just take a quick look at some of the things that the Mark III is all about. So you set it up, this right here, is the pedestal and the pedestal allows you to move the gear 180 degrees the wind vane itself is removable allowing you to change it to a smaller gear when needed in higher wind situations. All the bearings are Teflon and I just found a piece of it and then I just cut it into the pieces I need. There's a stainless steel shaft that runs through the center here and the, the shaft is not touching any of the wooden bits at all. It's the wooden bits uh, these sides have been drilled oversize, filled with epoxy, and then re-drilled to the size of the uh, stainless steel bar. The pulley, it's very simple to make a pulley with a table saw. Uh, I'm not going to show you because I don't have the table saw anymore, but it's one of those things that you can YouTube and figure out. And we're looking down and then we're looking over and when I move the wind vane itself you can see how the control bar on the trim tab is moving and if we look into the water well, it's difficult to see, but the trim tab is moving. There's a counterweight here to augment the weight of the trim tab itself. And then we have the mounting. In this photograph, we're looking at the base, which is the two components on the left and the center, and the pedestal, which is the component on the right. All three are made out of plywood. The majority are made out of half inch plywood. However, the picture in the center is a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Essentially, I was using what I had laying around the garage. You can make this out of virtually any material. Now, in this case, the base has been designed to fit Wave Rover's transom. So the angles have been cut 
so as to make sure that the vane gear itself is level to the waterline. Uh, depending on what your transom looks like, you'll have to fabricate something that would uh, give you the same level base. In this photograph, I'm in the process of fiberglassing the components. So the top of the bottom component, which is the flat surface that the pedestal will rest on, has a layer of fiberglass on the top. The sides of the base unit will be fiberglassed all the way around because they'll be exposed to the sea. And the pedestal itself, it's just the disc that has been fiberglassed. The rest has been coated generously in epoxy and it will get special treatment wherever the uh, shaft of steel goes through. That, just like in the other processes on the rudder, the holes are drilled oversized, they're filled with epoxy and fibers, then they're re-drilled down to the size of the shaft. When assembled, this is what it looks like. Note how the pedestal is connected to the base. There are three points. All three are pieces of hardwood with a, with a tiny amount of clearance to allow the pedestal to turn within its radius. In this photograph, note that we're looking down through the pedestal and it's kind of hard to see, but there's a four inch diameter piece of ABS sewer pipe. And that pipe is what I designed the pedestal around so that that pipe just fits tightly inside the pedestal. And that pipe also has supports underneath the base that keep it, in a, keep it centered so that when you turn, it's the ABS that's actually rubbing against the supports underneath, which are made of Teflon. When I purchased Wave Rover, the push pit didn't have a continuous bar across the, the back. So in this case, I have fabricated a piece of wood and then I've covered it in fiberglass cloth. The base assembly is now through bolted to this piece of hardwood. The hardwood that the base is through bolted through is in turn connected to the push pit by lashings. These lashings are made out of lobster twine, which is a twine that we have uh, locally in, in Prince Edward Island. It's polyester and it's about a sixteenth of an inch in diameter. Despite being through two good-sized North Atlantic gales, the lashings are still in perfect condition, just as good condition as when Wave Rover left Canada. In this photograph, we're looking at the forward connection point of the pedestal. Now, this is connected with a wing nut because this particular piece of hardwood is tightened down to lock the pedestal in place once you've chosen at what angle to the wind the pedestal is going to be. So essentially this piece of hardwood controls the or locks in the pedestal and that in turn tells the boat which direction to steer. In this photo we're looking at the Teflon. The Teflon is three quarter inch Teflon. It's the same material I used for the bearings on the trim tab in the previous video. It was a piece that I found on Wave Rover that had a previous life as a cutting board. The round portions, the smaller round discs, they are cut with a hole saw and the other pieces are cut with the table saw. So here I am. I'm back in Prince Edward Island. I've left the Canaries for two weeks and I'm on vacation. So what do you do on vacation? Well, you make some extra spare parts for your steering gear just in case the wind takes the uh, vane and, you know, blows it into the sea. So I'm going to make just a couple of extra spares because I lost one because I wasn't hanging on to it tight enough on the North Atlantic crossing. So in this case, I've already pre-cut this um, 3 16 plywood to 11 inches in width and I'm going to make it 22 inches long, which is a bit of a compromise from the previous ones. They were 28. 
I still have a few at 28, so I just want to see what it, I'll experiment with this. So there we set the saw to 22 inches. Now I'm going to flash it up and just push this carefully through. This is a section view of the vane gear. This gives you an overall idea of what's involved in the different pieces. So this was my first concept. This is the, uh, the drawing that I did just to clarify the ideas that were in my head. What we're looking at here is a plan view of the base. Uh, note that this is a sketch again, it's not the scale. Now this is a roughly scaled diagram of the vein itself. You, you get a pretty good idea here of how the top end of the pedestal is assembled. And finally we're looking at the cutting list. So bear in mind that these drawings and these lists were uh, just made for myself. I didn't realize that I'd be sharing them. So uh, bear with me on the quality. You may have to stop the video and zoom in to, to uh, see the numbers a little more clearly. But all the information is there for you to create a working wind vane. And finally, the counterweight. The counterweight is lead. And what I did was I took a standard tuna tin and I filled it with molten lead halfway up and I find that that counterweight is enough for the wind vane. Well, I hope you found this informative. There will be one more segment, and that won't be uploaded until after I get into Panama, which will be several weeks from now. So the, the last video will be all about how to operate the Mark III.